Go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, it's Trevor Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Nice. Dude, freaking what up? I'm absolutely fired up to be back in the studio with my dank dog, Aaron, on the sticks, the the maestro of the freaking sticks over there. Aaron, what up, dude? What up? Dude, I'm fired up. And you want to know why, dude? Because I feel like I'm a caged animal right now. Because, dude, had the Omicron, dude. Had it. Same and, and I'll tell you right now. Yeah, dude, we're two. Me and you right now, our antibodies through the roof, dude. I'm going to let a stranger pee in my mouth. <laughs> I don't care. Let's go. I'm ready to rock. And I'll tell you, you know, the energy was, I had low energy, dude. And you know, I like being stoked. I, I, I wake up, I'm, I sleep with my shoes on. That's the type of guy I am. I'm ready to move. Let's go. Got Velcro shoes on, dude, and I'm just strapped up, and they're my sleeping shoes. My fiance goes, what are you doing? What is that? It's uncomfortable. Don't let those touch my toes. I go, all right, don't worry, because I sleep. I basically sleep on my bed the way I sleep is I have my, uh, the bed is pretty, and I'm pretty lanky, so it's good. I have my ass basically laying on the mattress, and then my legs are off the um, the back end of it, of the bed, like the uh, the foot of the bed is what you would call it. For me, it would be the ass of my bed because my ass is there. And basically, I just I can wake up and move. I can move laterally. Earthquake happens. I'm ready to go. Let's just put it this way. I bark and wake my dog up in the morning. Okay? <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how ready I am. But when it came to Omicron, I was fucking tired, dude. Made me tired, bro. I don't like that, dude. I didn't even, Aaron, I'll tell you right now. Full disclosure. I didn't even want to go to the drill factory. That's a sad day. I mean, I, I didn't want to either, but my body said otherwise. I love that. That was a bit of a symptom I did not expect. Total full disclosure, so did I. Had to. <laughs> Had to see if I'm still living. Because if I ain't in the drill factory, am I really living? You know? I'm like Harry fucking Stamper, baby. I'll hit my mark. I never miss a mark. 800 feet through pure... Asteroid, steel rock, whatever the hell that shit is. I'm drilling myself. I'm the hairy stamper of jacking off. <laughs> <laughs> you got a job now to take care of my daughter. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Dude, what a great that's scene, good, that's bro. That's good Affleck crying there. Dude, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> take care of... Dude, honestly, bro, good actress... But too much of bummer energy for me, uh, um, Liv, Tyler? Liv Tyler. Too much of bummer, bummer energy for me. I mean, it's, it's, it's real. She played that thing real. Yeah, she's legit. Her dad and her boyfriend are in space. It's true. You'd be bummed out. What a great-ass movie. But today, we're not talking about space. We're not talking about asteroids. We're going to be talking about, and this was a uh, suggestion for an episode, and I'm fired up because I didn't really know about it, but turns out I've been watching the dank-ass show, Last Kingdom, which I've talked about before. My boy Uhtred, dude, you sold my timber. You sold my p timber, and destiny is all, and maybe it was my destiny to do this dank-ass episode because we're going to do it on the great heathen army, okay, of the 9th century. Now, he wrote it and said 8th century, but then I did a little research and it was more than 9th century. But we're going to break down some freaking Paleolithic periods. But before we do that, today's episode is brought to you by Dadgrass. Dude, thank you to Dadgrass, bro. Legal, organic CBD that relaxes your rig, that's your body, and mellows your dome, that's your mind. And I'm fired up, dude. It takes you back to that area, that era, excuse me, when, you know, there were mellower vibes out there, dude. You know what I mean? And Dadgrass, you're just a freaking drop or a toke, dude. Away with Dadgrass. It'll take you back to that time when music was on vinyl. Delta was a freaking only an airline, dude. Freaking hipsters wore a style of jeans, not some dudes that just, you know, stared at you because you, you, you're you not looking sick in corduroy pants at the coffee shop in freaking Echo Park, which is right by where I live in Los Feliz, which is also filled with his, hipsters. So Dadgrass just gets you to that place where you can sit back, 
light up and chill out the old-fashioned way like it's supposed to be, dude. And right now, Daggrass is offering 20% off your first order at daggrass.com slash dank. That's daggrass.com slash dank for 20% off your first order. <laughs> Treat yourself, dude. All right, dude. So, the great heathen army, bro. <clears throat> first of all, Aaron, where do we get this term heathen? It sounds derogatory. Yeah. It sounds like how I handle my dong in the drill factory like an absolute heathen, hunched over, ah, ah, you know, making noises. Like, I feel like that's how Maurice and definitely the Schmoll drills themselves. The Schmoll's definitely, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> in there, just making ungraceful noises, just really, really getting, hey, you know, just really having at himself. But the, word, the term heathen, really, they were Norsemen um, or Vikings. Which oh. we'll get into uh, where that term Viking comes from because no one of that era was like, oh, the Vikings are coming. They'd be like, no, the heathens are coming. And the, the heathen refers to these Norse raiders. Um, and it was basically given to them by the church because uh, these Norse raiders would go down and they'd plunder everything and then return back up up north with their spoils. And they'd hit areas that had wealth, which were monasteries. You know, they had gold crosses and you know chalices and shit dude chalices bro mm -hmm. any place that has a chalice has wealth dude a lot of homes in orange county had chalices dude growing up um uh priori's dude were targeted dude leading to christian contempt and sources labeling these invaders you know the the christians were the one writing about it and they you know we're gonna go these friggin' heathens would cruise down and jack our stuff so that's where we get that that uh term so from the contempt of the christians and now today's episode, <clears throat> we're going to talk about sort of what this um, great heathen army did, because they sort of varied from the typical blueprint of a Viking raid, right? They called them raiders. You'd go down, you'd raid, you'd hit a monastery or a village or whatever. You'd, you'd take, you'd, you know, you'd freaking fight, merc some dudes, dude, and, and jack people. You would take slaves, you'd take ladies, and you'd take treasures, and you'd cruise back up to your home if you were a Viking or a, quote, heathen. Now, the great heathen army doesn't exactly do that. They switch things up here in the ninth century, uh, Aaron. And I want to go to a Viking Rager. Dude, I'd love to go to a Viking Rager. You got to imagine there's a lot of techno music being played, a lot of vampire um, aesthetic and clothing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> braids. Tons of braids, beads being worn. Um, I would imagine people will do that teeth filing type stuff. I would imagine lots of neon, you know, if, if it's set in a contemporary era. I think a back in the day Viking Rager would be legit. You know, you would have, and we'll get into this a little bit, you might think there might be a dude drinking out of a skull. Yep. Definitely a dude drinking out of a horn, you know. A lot of jacked dudes. And, that, and that's a thing here, and I need to really tell you that in my research, I do have a bias because, and I've said this, I love jacked dudes on boats okay if it's the minnesota vikings having a sex party just after the y2k crossover or if it's you know a heathen army of the ninth century i love jacked dudes rowing working on their lats on boats working together to get somewhere it's sick the only thing that since it's up in you know the british isles is they're probably not going to be that tan because there's a lot of crowd cloud coverage which does <clears throat> get me a little bit unstoked it's why I'm quite partial to Pirates of the Caribbean. They're very tanned, lathered up, sweating, drinking grog, having a dank-ass time. Um, so I just want that out there, that I do have that inherent bias. So <clears throat> what arch archaeological era are we dealing with here? And I'm sorry if I'm clearing my throat on the pod, if that's bothering the listeners, but I'm getting over Omicron, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm ready to rock and roll. But there's a little residual effect, which does piss me off dude uh, you know uh, if i'm gonna beef on something it's gonna be on congestion dude i hate being congested aaron how about you yeah totally sucks fucking sucks bro dude i took sudafed which is basically a um what the hell is the what's the word i'm looking for diet meth yes it's diet dude it is for sure Diet meth. It starts with an E. What the fuck is it? It's a, uh, I'll think of it when I'm, you know, how your brain will circle back to it. But yeah, bro, I didn't realize all they had left was the 24 hour one. And I didn't take more than one in 24 hours. 
But dude, I was going to bed and I was not going to bed. Like it, it did get me over my tiredness because I was wired as fuck, dude. I was just dropping in a caldera, calling, pinging bros, dude, calling stuff out for my bros, dude. Amphetamine? An amphetamine. Yeah. That's it. That's what I was looking for. That word. Dude. I was wired on that shit, dude. Talk about ready to go, dude. I was sleeping in jeans, dude, and a fucking jacket and shoes, dude. I, I was literally sleeping standing up, dude. Mm -hmm. Just like a vampire style. Just crossed my arms, dude. Just ready to rock and roll, dude. It was un, it was unbelievable. I, I literally was doing a wall sit, dude. That's how I was asleep. Just ready to rock. Two dumbbells in my hand, dude. I'm ready to move, dude. A little go bag, dude, around the front, dude. Backpack wearing it on my chest, dude. One of those type of dudes. Just ready to rock and roll. So anyway, dude, you might, might imagine I'm still on an amphetamine right now the way I can't get to these archaeological errors. But here we go. You got, you know, this is in regards to Western Europe. You got the Paleolithic era. That goes all way back, dude. You know, that's like almost 10,000 BC. Then you got the Mesolithic, you know, that's like, takes you up to about 5,000 BC. Neolithic, dude, takes you up to about 2,000 BC. Bronze Age, dude, we've heard of that. Bronze Age, right? And this is when, what civilizations are using as tools and building structures from, you know, bronze is being introduced here. That takes you up to about 800 BC. Iron Age, dude, right? This takes you up to about zero, the year zero. Um, then you got your Roman era. That's like, you know, 50 BC to 400 common era, about the peak of the Roman Empire, 400 common era, dude. Get you up to Julius Caesar and shit like that, dude. Then you got the early medieval period, 400 to 800. Then you got your medieval period, 800 to 1500. So we're operating in this early medieval to uh, the beginning of the middle, like the ninth century, right? Um, that's where we are at right now with this great heathen army. Then you got post medieval, fifteen to eighteen hundred, and industrial modern. After that, um, but we're operating around the, the ninth century, early medieval period. So basically, it's unforgiving times, dude. You know, you scrape yourself wrong, you can get an infection and die. Slip into a coma and die. You can, fucking, you know, you get a splinter that can get infected, get in your bloodstream, you slip into a coma and die. So. Anything can go wrong right here. Dude. You could just be farming one day and some dude could just say, I'm going to go murk this guy and take all his shit. And that's what the heathens were doing. And this great heathen army switched up the formula where they said, we're going to bring out, what are we doing? It's cold as fuck up here in Norse land, dude. Norway, Iceland, you know, later Greenland, you know, the Vikings were exploratory. Uh, they're going, fuck this. Let's just go down there and just set up camp. Let's bring a sizable Viking force and let's cruise down there. And, and sizable for back then is around some 3,000 men. And this is in the year 865, common era. They landed on the Isle of Thanet and Kent with little intention of accepting payments. So sometimes people would, they, they would call it Dane gold. They would give it to the Danes. So in, in that era, they weren't called Vikings. They were called Danes, you know, Danish Norsemen, dudes from the north. And they would set aside an appeasement. They'd go, all right, dude, just take this gold. Don't mark us and just bounce. And they'd go, no, nah, dude, we will take your Dane gold for sure, but we're staying, dude. <laughs> and then they would fight and they would stay. Um, and they would move in. They organized them into a fleet themselves into a fleet of many ships. This is the, the, um, the heathen army. They're cruising down, dude. They, they cruise in from the North, of course, makes sense geographically. Right. And then they cut across, um, East Angolia, um, and was only halted when a local populace brokered, brokeraged a deal, a tentative alliance with the invaders that involved to supplying them with horses, dude. So horses, dude, you want to have cavalry, right? Um, so basically you're going, all right, why this time? You know, I mean, you look at something, you go, why 865? Why not a little bit earlier? Why not a little bit later? So if you are a Norseman or a Viking, you would be telling yourself the story of vengeance. You'd be saying, they killed Ragnar Lothbok, and we're going down for our vengeance. So the great heathen army was led by a few dudes, um, the main one being this dude, Ivar the Boneless. And they're not, Aaron, they're not exactly sure how Ivar the Boneless got his name. It could be because he never boned. Or could, I guess, yeah. Maybe he couldn't pop boners. Maybe he had ED, um, you know, 
and he was open about it and he talked about it and he's like, look, I like to fight because I can't pop boners. And so this is my one passion. But maybe it was real wiggly, like um, Weird Al. Aaron, that is actually a theory that they said that maybe it was due to his flexibility on the battlefield. And then conversely, that would go against my theory that he didn't bone. If you're flexible on the battlefield, you're probably also flexible in the bedroom. And so maybe he was really good at boning. Maybe he was a power bottom. He could do stuff, you know, put his own legs behind his, his head and get plowed Amazon style. And that'd be sick. Also, they say maybe he had a condition called osteogenesis imperfecta, which is an inability to walk. But he was a son of Ragnar um, Rothbok. And, you know, he was down there to seek vengeance for his father. Um, so this and then a little bit I was I mentioned earlier, I wanted to talk about this um, term Vikings that was only popularized in the 11th century. Once again, we're operating in 860 the year 865 here. So 300 years later, 250 years later, that's when these writings were coming out and people would refer to the Danes or the old, the Norse as Vikings. Um, so the term Viking possibly deriving from the word Vic, which in old Norse language, the Viking spoke means the Danes, uh, means bay or inlet. So dude, they would come in on ships so they'd come in into bays. So men's of the Vikings are of the inlet. Um, so Vic, um, <clears throat> dudes that cruise into the Vic, dude right bay dudes so instead they were called danes in the in that era there was no sense at the time that um that was sh that they should refer to these inhabitants of what they now call denmark um they were pagans or simply normani northern men so you'd be called a Dane, a dane a pagan normani or of course a heathen like we just said um so part of the great war um heathen army was led by a pair of warrior brothers halfdan <clears throat> and I already mentioned one, Ivar the Boneless did. And they wanted revenge for their father's death, uh, the Danish king, Ragnar Lothbok. Um, a lot of his early life is untrue or, or um, unclear. And Ragnar Lothbok is basically, you have, um, there's a lot of myth in Viking culture, and we've talked about it in the past. You know I love Vikings, dude. If you listen to this podcast, hopefully you do too, because I talk about them quite a bit. Um He's basically a prototypical, your quintessential, like, Viking uh, dude, you know? And there's differing stories about him, depictions of him. And basically, like all myth, there's probably rooted in some sort of truth. But a lot of it, you just got to go, this is not true. Um, but he was he was murdered by these, um, by um, King Aelfed, uh, the king of Wessex. I believe, and uh, but I'll get down to my research so I can get Ale Ayala is his name, <clears throat> not Alfred. Alfred's a, a fucking king from the show um, Last Kingdom, which is sick as hell. But this Northumbrian king Ayala A E L L A is the dude who kills um, <clears throat> Ragnar Lothbok, and then his sons go down there to get um, revenge, and they even say, you know, we're just gonna stay here now. We're gonna conquer you, dude. We're not just gonna cruise out and jack stuff from you. We're gonna conquer you, dude. Um, but a little bit about Ragnar Lothbrok. Lothbrok. Um, his life is basically um, st everything stereotypical Viking. Uh, he had three badass wives, dude. Here we go, dude. He had three dank-ass GFFs, dude. Uh, one who fought beside him, which was, you know, shield maidens. That's, that's something that is very true in Viking culture. Um, then he killed a serpent to win one's love, which is cool. He's murder, straight up murdered a giant-ass snake. Um, then he drank from a horned bone, which has been misinterpreted as his enemy's skulls. So, Aaron, remember I, we mentioned our Viking rager? There was never, there's really no actual proof or anything where a Viking, like maybe one dude did who was being savage or going berserker style, which is basically probably you took Sudafed as a Viking and then went out into the battlefield. Um, so it was misinterpreted that he would drink from a horn, like an animal's horn, and it was like a part of a skull but they would go oh that's his enemy skulls oh my gosh this guy Ragnar Lothbrok cruises down he's gonna kill us and he's gonna drink out of our heads you know just raising you know basically fear dude misinterpretation uh he did raid a ton you know he's a viking raider um another story said he was just an innocent fisherman and was just murdered um innocently by Ayala in any case you just got to imagine these stories were being told to vikings uh 
in Danes and Norsemen at the time by Ivar the Boneless and his freaking brother, Half Dan. Half Dan, dude, is how you spell it. Dude, this dude, Half Dan. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what that means, dude. If you're a Dan or you're just a regular dude, he's like half Viking warrior, half just, you know, works at a front desk at a gym or something like that. Hey, I'm Dan. Welcome to Anytime Fitness. Um, go ahead and check in. I've got pretty nice arms. I, um, I'm not really into using the equipment here. I actually like to do triathlons. I'm more of an outdoor exerciser. And in uh, any case, um, the other half of me is a doppelganger, and my name is Half Don, and I will, um, you know, go ahead and murk you, murk you with an axe with my nice arms. Uh, basically, Vikings were doing triathlons, dude. You know what I mean? They were running around in armor, cruising around on boats, maybe not swimming a lot and definitely not riding bicycles. So maybe they didn't do triathlons, but they had to be fit and jacked is what I'm saying. I'll say that a lot. Um, anyway, dude, this guy had three legit wives, or maybe he was just a fisherman and was murdered by the freaking king of Northumbria for no reason. Um, so he had eight sons, which meant he definitely boned. That's, that's tight. A lot of boning fired up on that. Um, I, so we may not know much factually about Ragnar Lothbrok, but we do know that he didn't like pulling out. <laughs> so um, this heathen force gets to, like I mentioned, they land in the north part of the of um, the British Isle. Then they start cruising down to seeking, uh, you know, avenging their father. Avenge me! Avenging their father, dude. Um, and they finally get to Northumbria. Um, Ivar's forces land in the kingdom of the east of East Anglia. Uh, they met little resistance. They move into Northumbria, where they capture the capital city of York in 866. Ayella and Osbert, the Northumbrian king who, who Ayella had de deposed, um, were not captured then, but in a second battle in March in 867, and both were killed, and Ayella gets something called the Blood Eagle. Aaron, you don't want the Blood Eagle, dude. I, I can only imagine. If someone tells you, hey, bro, you're about to get the Blood Eagle today, you run. Because I looked this up, the Blood Eagle was a practice, for Viking practice of uh, execution that allegedly found um, torturers, torturers or the executioners separating the victim's rib from their spine, pulling their bones and skins outward to form a set of wings, and removing their lungs from their chest cavity. And then, that's all while you're alive. And then obviously, in that process, you die. So that's what... Ayala gets. That's how they avenge the father, the death of Ragnar Lothbrok, for being murked while just trying to fish. Or probably he was a Viking raider, and you know, maybe he was killed while fishing one day or something on a surprise attack. Who knows? All we know is that he didn't like pulling out, and all we do know is that Ayala got blood eagled. If I got to choose a way to go, I'm not choosing the blood eagle, Aaron. Are you? Oh hell no. No. No 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 no. Just give me a nice, swift, give me a soldier's death, friggin' Maximus style, dude. So anyway, let's get back to what the heathen army did here. But before we do that, dude, once again, I want to let you know that today's ep is brought to you by Dadgrass, dude. Dadgrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind, dude. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it's shipped right to your door anywhere in the U.S. of A., which fires me up, dude. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm enjoying the pre-roll joints, dude. I'll cruise out on my balcony, dude. <sighs> Light one of those bad boys up, dude. Look up at the night sky and just imagine a dank era of when, you know, just when dads were smoking weed that just didn't get you too high, you know? I like to say it's like that glass of wine, not that whole bottle, dude. Just I like to put on a pair of jean shorts, just really slip into a nice dad. I like to, I like to you know, fix a light. I like to say that light's too dim. I like to fix it. Just really slip into my dad mode and just cruise out, fix that light, and then you know, and then shut it off, of course, and then go outside on the balcony, look up at the moon, enjoy my dad grass, and just you know probably cruise in finish watching Saving Private Ryan or Braveheart, which is what I love to do, and just really put myself into a nice relaxation state after a nice hard day's work. And I'll tell you what, if you're not into smoking those pre-roll joints, which I'm fired up on them, they now have dank, dank little um, 
Daggrass has these CBD tinctures made with the same high quality hemp. It's easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. So you can enjoy a little, you know, you put a little drop into whatever you're enjoying, glass of water, tea, who knows, whatever it is, whatever you like, and you can still get your, your buzz in a chill way, dude. So it's a new buzz in the chill way and you can enjoy it any freaking day. So, um, Daggrass just leaves you in that euphoric, legit, not too high mood, just right, bro. So pre-roll joints or get that tincture, dude, right now on Daggrass. Go, so go freaking cruise to daggrass.com slash dank because Daggrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to daggrass.com slash dank. So go to daggrass.com slash dank for 20% off your first order. That's daggrass.com slash dank. <laughs> legit, dude. All right, dude. So the heathen army, dude, back to their exploits, dude. So basically they seek their vengeance, dude. Um, Ivar the Boneless and Half Dan, dude, are all stoked right now, dude. They're like, look, we did the Blood Eagle, dude. We avenged our father, dude. It was sick. I don't know what our other six brothers are up to, but we handled biz. Turns out another brother has been helping out. And by the way, this heathen army also, they had, you know, various Danes from different villages and Norsemen and, and probably hired mercenaries as well. And they would take on soldiers as well. Um, they'd say, you know, you can join us or get marked. So dudes would even join them. Um, so they basically go, you know, Ivar's chill, dude. He's like, look, I'm going to go pillage maybe, you know, out East a little bit. And then half Dan's like, all right, dude, I'm going to cruise southwards to East Anglia. And he meets up with this dude called Edmund, the martyr, um, and given that England at this time in the ninth century consists of four kingdoms, um, it was easier for them to fight because one kingdom would be like, look, we just, we want to appease. We want to give them Dane gold and, and let them go like the typical raiding that they did. But really that was a mistake because they were there to stay. Um, ha had England been united at this time, maybe they all could have been like, look, we're all at war. Let's fight and maybe would have been able to hold their ground and perhaps boke them from the friggin' Viking heathens from their island. But since it was fragmented, the Vikings were able to make pretty quick work of their foes, dude. Um, Edmund the Martyr, dude, he's this British dude. He gets defeated. Um, he was tied to a tree and shot full of arrows for refusing to renounce his own Christianity. Not as bad as a blood eagle. I would take that over a blood eagle. Um, so once they do this, this is actually the final move where Ivar's army, um, he just cruises around. He decides to bounce around there, pillage a few churches and set up camp. Um, so, but then uh, Half Dan cruises out. He wants to go take down um, Etherland and Wessex. They put up a staunch defense and were victorious over the heathen army, um, in which by now had been um, basically split up in half. And they just decide to enter into trade and they they continue to you know fight skirmishes and smaller battles through 1872 or what am i talking about 872 um and at that time the heathen army winters in london so they're like look we're not going to go fight in this bad weather we're just going to post up right now dude uh but then look the vikings they're raiders they cruise out now there's a rebellion in northumbria and these Danes, aka Vikings, who are in control, got to be like, all right, how do we staunch a rebellion now? So um, they're just like, kind of like, well, let's just keep moving. Um, so once they are done wintering, they kind of cruise. Um, they accept payments of Dane gold. Um, Vikings set up a camp down in Rempton in Debershire, dude. Um, so that's where they believe um, the the grave of Ivar the Boneless is, but they don't know. Um, Basically, by 873, um, having been in the country for eight years now, the heathen army is split in half, right? Um, there's a marauding force that traveled um, north under the stewardship of Half Dan and Ragnar son. So I, I mentioned he teams up if one of his other brothers did. Um, they raid Scotland. The other half moves south. Um, and they just freaking post up down there, do a little more raiding. Uh, but they basically end up... You know, the Vikings, they, they say in this research of figure of speech, they, they put down the axe and pick up the plow, dude. Um, and which this kind of surprised me in my research of basically in 865, Vikings just settle into London. So, or, or not London, but the British Isle, different parts of it, Scotland, and basically all over and intermingle and become, you know, so people that are British today have 
Viking blood in them, dude. That, these are become their ancestors. So it's pretty gnarly. And I mean, um, the Vikings get defeated um, and the rating stops King Alfred, who I mentioned, which is from the Dank Ash show that I watched, Last Kingdom. Um, they have a battle at Eddington in Wil um, Wiltshire uh, where the Vikings are defeated. Um, and this dude, the leader at this time, um, his name is Guthrum. He agrees to get baptized and sort of becomes, you know, part of the people by picking up the plow, working the land and accepting their religion. So basically it's a full immersion. So the big impact of this great heathen army um, is cohesiveness. It doesn't split up the aisle. It doesn't conquer or, or take over a people. It's kind of interesting, like the British culture, Saxon culture, Anglo-Saxon culture takes in the Vikings. It's not like a Roman conqueror where it's like, we take your village and then you become Roman after some time. You sort of, maybe you have some of your traditions of your old, of your culture, but you basically become Roman. Um, this is sort of opposite. It's a conquering force that comes in and immerses itself in England. So it's it's weird. Yeah, they like assimilate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They assimilate. They're like, man, we just didn't like it up there. It was cold. We wanted to fight. It's like a bully who like accepts love at the end. Like that's kind of what it ends up being. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's basically the story, dude. You know, they switch up their blueprint. They do some fighting. They sneak some vengeance. Brothers split up. In due time, they all end up settling. Um, so pretty gnarly, dude. Pretty gnarly. And that's what you got, bro. That's your story of the great heathen army of the 9th century, 8th, 9th century. Early medieval period. Pretty gnarly, dude. You don't want to get blood eagled is what I took out of that, dude. Yeah. And then you do, I mean, if you do have a, you know, we mentioned I want my name to be Strider the Dank and you are Aaron the Beast of the Sticks. And uh, you definitely don't want to go through history as your name, Ivar the Boneless. Yeah, it seems, seems cruel. Totally, totally. But unless he was flexible. That's sick, because then he could, you know, probably have some good hip motion in, while making love and then, you know, bending backwards and going berserk on the battlefield on Sudafed. But, dude, let's take a few cues and then bone out. What do you say? So, what up, Strider? I'm getting married in April, and my attempts to convince my DF to freak rather than slow dance for the first dance at our wedding hasn't been received well as, I ex as well as I expected. I've transitioned to pitching a traditional first half with a su surprise beat drop halfway through, transitioning us from slow dance to some hot, heavy, nasty freaking for the second half. I think that would fire people up and set the tone for the rest of the party. Two-part que two question here. Do you think this is a solid idea, or would you scrap it all together? If it's the prior rather than the latter, how would you suggest um, going about convincing my sweet, soft-spoken DF to get on board? Cheers, Frazier. I mean, I love freaking. You know that. I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a compromise to do a beat drop halfway through. I think that'd be fun. I think it's more bold to go out there, and I think it would be a beautiful statement if you just go out there for your first dance. You know, you have the DJ, can we please welcome the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs., you know, whatever, um, Smith, to cruise out to the dance floor for their first dance as a newlywed couple. And then, boom, you know what I would do? I wouldn't even have it be a hard drop. I'd have it be like an acoustic. You know, I've said acoustic version of Toxic, but maybe an acoustic version of Cisco's thong song, maybe on a harp or some shit like that, and you guys freak to that. And it's not a hard grinding freak. Maybe it's a mellow, sensual, nice freaking. And, you, and it's letting everybody know this couple's going to consummate the bond later because about 50% of couples don't. And if you do something like that, you guys might consummate right there on the dance floor. You know, and maybe it's a wedding where there's no kids present, so really it'd be cool. You could. Um, so that's where I'm thinking. And how do you go about convincing her to do that? I mean, you know, here's the thing. I am a proponent. Look, it's your both of your day, but really it's the bride's day. So you got to yield to what she wants her dance to be in her vision. Um, and, you know, there's other songs that you can freak to. And maybe you say, all right, we're going to freak to three songs then in a row. Um, if we don't get to do it as our first dance and, you know, maybe then you guys dance to some Van Morrison crazy love or something like that and it's slow and it's cute and you have a nice smooch. Um, and it's still going to be beautiful because you, you know, happy, you want her to be happy is, is the true thing. And in freak dancing, I think will get her stoked. Um, but if in that moment she says she wants a slow dance, I think you got to listen. I don't think you should do any convincing. Um, 
if you do, I would say maybe bust out a new move. Maybe start stretching. Um, do something legit where you can get inverted by getting like on all fours and humping the air directly upwards. Um, that could be a sick move that could fire her up. And when she goes, well, if you're thinking of doing that, then yeah, we got to. What do you think, Aaron? I mean, the first the first dance is so tricky. Like, I still feel like I screwed it up a little bit. I was supposed to like halfway through the song. First dance songs are always too long. Yeah, that's true. If you can pick a shorter song, great. But even so, it's just like it's always it's always going to feel too long because it's too many people mm-hmm. watching two people dance. Mm-hmm. And halfway through, I was supposed to like wave everybody to join us. Yeah. Um, maybe that's something you can incorporate as well uh, if you get the freak dance going. But I don't know. I don't know how to get it done, and I don't know how it's going to look. Perhaps the coolest sensation is freak dancing with two ladies at once. Maybe you could ask if the, her mom wants to come and join. You could do something like that. Be nice. You know, she could, uh, the mom could obviously be on the tail end. She could be, you know, freak dancing you while you freak dance her and you create a nice little train that could be tight. Um, I think it'd be a beautiful thing, Fraser. I think you're on to something big here. And I mean, yeah, Aaron, like you said, it's a long, it's a long time, like two minutes of watching someone slow dance. Not that interesting. Two minutes of watching someone bone. Interesting. Freak dancing? I could watch that for five minutes, eight minutes straight. With full wood. Um, maybe you tell her, Fraser, look, let's just freak dance till I pop a bone. And you're going to be excited. You'll probably pop a bone pretty quick. It might not be that long. There you go. All right, let's move on. Uh, what is going on, Strider and Aaron? I hope this new year is treating you both super dank. I love you both much, and you guys mean a lot to us dankatorians. So thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you, my dog. Right back at you, bro. I want to give my dank GF Stephanie, a.k.a. Pumpkin Butt, a shout out for everything she does for me, especially for her fire moves on the D floor at my cousin Kelly's wedding a couple weekends ago. After dinner, no one was on the dance floor, so my GF and I decided we were going to get, we're going to start the party. And once we did, people followed us, and I sensed the stoke being raised at the venue, which was super sick. Dancing with her is just so freeing. Whether it was slow, freak, or EDM song at the moment, uh, the world stops, and it's just her and I. My GF and I, my GF. Jeff is just the best. We have been together for like two and three quarter years. I love her to death and she's always keeps my stoke tank filled when it goes down. Um, when it goes down, she is always doing the little things to refill that tank. All the stoke and love, Freddie K. I mean, dude, that's just a fired up shout out right there. And I'm loving the how the dance floor is bringing people together today. And there's lots of freaking and EDM slow freaking going on. I love that, dude. Just just front freaking each other, staring in each other's eyes can be a little off-putting for other people on the dance floor. But when, you, like you said, when he, you're locked in, it's just you two out there in the whole world. is just, you know, it's it's right there in front of you and on that dance floor and in that moment, in that beat. Um, that's a beautiful thing. So fired up on that shout out. Lock it up, Freddie. That's all I'm going to say. That's what I'm saying, dude. Put a Lock ring on it, dude. Lock it up. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Let's go, dude. And you, that sounds like a couple that will freak on their first for their first dance, Freddie K, if, if not my boy Frazier. All right, let's do one more than bone out. Strider, what up, dude? I also got called a, a bitch. Oh, he was, so he's listening to this episode. I also got called a bitch by some teenagers. I'm 41, and I like to sag and skate and cruise to the skate park. I got there, and all these teenagers were there, and they said I skate slow, which is true, but I'm enjoying myself, you know? Anyway, what can I do to not get bullied? I just want to pop shove it and work the coping in peace. Steve. I don't know, man. I think teenagers are vicious, dude. They sound like middle school kids at a skate park. And it sounds like, you know, that's their turf, dude. And, and, and you're sagging. You're looking legit. You're not enforcing any rules on them. You're just trying to say, dude, let me skate in peace. And these kids are, seems like they're, maybe they're not going out of the way. I mean, dude, maybe if there's a corner of the park where you can skate and work the coping in peace. I mean, honestly, dude, what I do, I give them money for my wallet. I mean, maybe show up with a 12-pack of Code Red, give it to them, dude, as a peace offer. You need to have Dane gold for these kids. Middle schoolers are like Vikings, dude. They're they're little raiders, dude, and, and you need to appease them. So bring them Mountain Dew or give them money from your wallet, and just hopefully they leave you alone. That's all you can do. Because I got tabletop by some outside a grocery store and called a pussy. And I don't know what to do. 
I went in my car and I, I felt like crying. So I want you to be able to skate and work the coping in peace. I don't know, Aaron, what do you think, dude? How's he? I mean, I think you got to go prison rules here. I think you got to go, you walk in, you find the biggest one, you hit him first. Can you do that? He's I 41. Don't I don't know. I know I want to. Maybe you open palm. Maybe if you slap them, you tell the cop, like, look, cop, these kids are annoying as fuck. I slap them. And then you look at the kids because they all like talk like this, like fucking, what up, dude? What up, bro? What up? What are you doing? Get out of the way. You're moving slow. Get out of the way. Like when I hear that voice from a teenager, ah, oh, man, fuck yeah. I want to pin that kid. So I want to, that's yeah. the only person in the world I want to pin more than my dad. It's a kid who talks like that. Move, bitch. I mean, it's either that or uh, carry a switchblade. I think that's a, that's yeah, a power have a move knife. too. Have a knife on you at all times. That's a good yeah. move. And like fix it with something so they know that you have that knife. Mm. That's a good move. It's a good move. Anyway, dude, Steve, I love that you're getting out there sagging, rocking the coping, wearing a backwards beanie. <laughs> it's a backwards beanie, dude. Who knows if it's backwards? Maybe it has an emblem on the front. Any case, dude, that's our rep. Fire it up, dude. Cruise to the Patreon. I'm putting facts on there, dude. Just Strider Wilson. Um, email me. Shout outs. I love these shout outs I got today and these questions. Strider Wilson shreds at gmail.com. Aaron's a beast on the sticks. Thank you, Aaron. Um, looking forward to the next ep. Fired up. Sorry this one was delayed, dude, but Omicron just freaking, you know, Amazon styled me. So, um, but we're back in action, baby, making it happen, dude. Stay stoked and late, dude. Dank Torians. <laughs>